Hello, today we are opening the exhibition Flashback, Return to Cluj, with photographic works by Miron Zovnia here at the Art Museum in Cluj-Napoca. My name is Ingo Tegge, I represent the German Cultural Center and I'm here today by digital means with the artist, veteran German photographer Miron Zovnia and with Olympia Bera who is a vice rector at the University for Art and Design in Cluj-Napoca and who curated this exhibition. Due to the COVID situation, we will not be able to open uh, this exhibition with a classic vernissage, but we hope that this digital format or this virtual vernissage will be interesting and inspiring for you as well. Miron, the exhibition is titled Flashback, Return to Cluj. Can you tell us in which way this exhibition is a return to Cluj and to Romania for you? Well, it is not a return to Cluj for me, which probably uh, it was supposed to be, but uh, at least um, the photos arrived safely in Cluj and we can exhibit. And um, well, I guess this is my indirect return to Cluj and uh, maybe we have another opportunity for a real uh, return. I certainly hope so. And um, this is a question for both of you. Uh, maybe Miron, we, uh, we continue and then afterwards I will ask the same question to Olympia because I'm not uh, quite sure who of you was uh, 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 the, the person behind this idea. Um, the exhibition combines two series of works, one called Romania Raw, which uh, was created during a residency in 2018, and one from 1995 called Down and Out in Moscow. Why did you decide to combine these two series? What are the elements that combine these uh, works and these uh, photographs? Well, this is a very good question. Uh, I don't know if I ever asked myself this question <laughs> myself, but um, 95 was a crucial turning point in, the, in Russia. Uh, it was, um, I think, five or six years after the breaking down of the communist system. And it was probably the most miserable time in Russia since the um, Stalin time, but in a completely different way, because many people were really left alone um, without any means. And uh, it was uh, it was not really, um, it was a situation which was so outrageous, but it wasn't really that covered by the media, because the media was, um, concentrated on um, the transition. It was uh, about the um, connection between the West and the East. And um, there was a lot of hope and there was a lot of um, expectation, but nobody really was aware of how many people really suffered from the transition and couldn't adjust to it. Um, Romania, Romania, um, many years later, was of course a completely different situation, but it was also about people living under very, very isolated and miserable situations in a country which um, basically adjusted um, to um, the new requirements of the West, of uh, democracy, etc., etc. So, but um, for me, I mean, I, I could have even included Ukrainian, my Ukrainian photos uh, before and after the Maidan revolution, which was also um, a situation which was very unusual, which was um, Actually, it was unpredictable because what happened in in the in Ukraine on Maidan wasn't in any way 
visible the few months before the time I have been in the Ukraine. So, but uh, we'll be talking about um, two Eastern countries, former Soviet countries, and um, where, in my opinion, this, this, this status quo at the time I have been there was much, much more radical and existential than it was anywhere in Western Europe. Thank you very much. And I would uh, address the same question also to Olympia, um, being the curator of the exhibition, um, how this uh, combination of uh, pictures from the 90s, from Russia, from Moscow, and from 2018, from the Romania project, uh, uh, came to be and how it influenced the, the uh, curation and the, the setup of the exhibition. Um, well, I, I do not remember exactly how it was. I don't know exactly even if it was my idea or Miro's, maybe it was both. Because the, the things came out naturally. Um, we, we decided to put face into face those two kinds of situations because um, we speak about two different realities, but it's in the same time, it's, uh, the, it's about the memory. This is why I trusted Miron about uh, having his feelings um, on um, confronting these two parts of the, pro of, of the project flashback, Return to Cluj. Um, when he came in the residency two years ago, um, I, we had a, a very simple discussion about his expectations in Romania. He couldn't tell me in the first place. Uh, he saw Cluj, he saw that um, it's a very beautiful city, but he wanted to see more. And um, I saw him as an artist in action. I, I see him as an actionist, actually, even in the photography. Not, it's, it's like a performer. He, he had the delight to discover all the aspects in um, Cluj, in Patarut, in Baia Mare, in Bucharest, in Dimishara, in uh, all over those, in uh, all over these uh, cities, traveling by car or by train. Some as aspects I, I don't even know. It was it it was his own adventure, um, but I respected uh, this vision that uh, maybe it's better to confront uh, the two uh, the two realities, even they are very apart from the point of view of uh, the event, the historical event. I mean, um, in Moscow, there was a fact there were events. Um, the situation was, was very uh, violent itself. But in Romania, everything was uh, hidden behind, uh, behind the, the real course of the society, what is seen. He discovered what was not seen, but not um, um, not as a, an event itself, like it was in the Moscow um, series. Um, this is why we tried to make this contrast between um, two different situations, but um, two um, perspectives, two per perspectives from uh, his point of view, actually. And uh, what we were um, interested about was the, the radical eye of his photography that his photography reflects, um, that is guiding all over this this, uh, this exhibition. I found one. Uh, I found uh, it very interesting when you said, which is really true, the very obvious in Moscow and the hidden. In Romania, yes. which is very yes. interesting, which is really true. But both yes. things, even the obvious in Moscow, people try to blend it out to cover it or uh, not to acknowledge it. So in a way, it is, has a, a similar effect. Yes, and there are similarities, but also uh, a very visible contrast between right. the two civilities, actually. Uh, it's, it's, it's different. Um, here is different uh, people, but uh, some kind of 
same feelings. Yeah, and misery, misery is, yeah, and misery is ageless. Yes, and in this time we can uh, really talk about misery because we are very equal, all of us. We are equal <laughs> in front of a virus. Uh. It, well, yeah, but we still okay, but we are still not equal because the ones which really have nothing suffer more than we. We still, you know, we can handle a situation even if it's uncomfortable, but we are still in a privileged situation if we're talking about us three. Uh, uh, Miron, you told me in the past that you worked on this Corona Berlin series where you um, travel through Berlin looking at. Um, uh, 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 the places that were usually full of people also during the lockdown and you told me that especially the poverty and the homeless were much more visible than usual. Um, do you think that this is one of the um, results also of the Covid pandemic that uh, misery comes into focus even more? Well, in the first lockdown it definitely was. The second lockdown is more half-hearted. You see a lot of people still around, a lot of cars, because there are only specific places which were really closed down, like restaurants or museums or galleries. But uh, people, I would say 85% of the people still drive to work, come back. Um, there are a couple of more people you see with masks, but not that many. And um, the prediction is, that we're facing within the next two or three weeks a lot of problems even with availability in Germany even if in, even in Germany with beds and uh, with people who can really help or have uh, any medical um, background so the situation might even get worse than it was in the spring but in the outside, it doesn't have that desolation, that feeling, that emptiness, because, it, as I said, it's uh, are different measurements. Speaking of uh, desolation and uh, uh, emptiness, um, you also made some very drastic photos from, uh, for example, Paterit, uh, a Roma community that is basically on the landfill on the outskirts of Cluj-Napoca. Can you tell us a bit about your experience there, of your work uh, in Patarit? Well, the absolutely first time I went there was with Livio. Um, and we went with a taxi to the camp. And uh, we were driving through and um, very slowly uh, past all uh, those different camps and um, people were yelling insults at us, throwing some uh, bottles or whatever. And uh, we arrived at the almost at the end where that big um, garbage pile, this incredible big garbage pile was fenced in and everything. And we asked for per if it would be possible uh, for me to make photos there. And uh, everybody was very um, negative about it. And we drove we already, and I thought, oh God, how should I ever make photos there? And we were driving back and uh, all of a sudden I saw a pile of, and I said to leave you, uh, to the cab driver, okay, please stop here. I want to uh, make some photos. And I stepped out and at the moment I stepped out, those dogs attacked me. And it was because of Livio who opened the door of the cab said I could escape. So. I was thinking I could never make photos there. It's impossible. Everything is everything is so hostile and um, impossible to get there. And thanks to you and your connection to Alex, the kickbox vice champion who used to live in this Roma community, he introduced me to one specific um, Roma camp which was called Dallas. And when you entered it, there was a big sign, no photography allowed. But because of Alex, who introduced me to the um, Don of the camp, I could make pretty freely photos, even if some people still uh, resented it, but others, especially the kids, were 
very open about it. But this was the only the one time I was in the company of Alex. So when I went the second time to another camp, there was again first that hostile feeling and nobody wanted me to make photos. But I used Alex as a reference and all of a sudden people said, oh, Alex, yeah, Alex, okay. And, and it was kind of a second introduction, even just using his name and there was a kind of a trust and all of a sudden people opened up to me. This was not always the case and sometimes I really had to I, I had to, uh, I, I went to places where the hostility was really strong and I almost got attacked or I had to verbally fight my way out. But it it was an introduction which extremely helped me in Patarit to get through all the different uh, areas. Of course, in um, Bayamare, it was a completely different approach because I, I didn't have that much help. But... Um, after I have been visible there a couple of times, people even also recognized me and uh, showed me pretty uh, showed me pretty much trust and uh, um, made it possible for me to um, work there without really getting hurt. But I never could really enter that fenced-in uh, garbage pile uh, that did it. A garbage disposal because um, I think they were very afraid of negative um, this is just new it, there were many things which were hygienically maybe not okay and uh, it was maybe didn't uh, live up to the regulations uh, so there was from the organization which is behind that uh, um, garbage disposal, so they were very negative about anyone coming from the outside and documenting this unbelievable situation. Uh, many of your works are very, very stark, very intense. Uh, I would say they are neither what you would call poverty porn or um, uh, uh, somehow making fun of the individuals you portray, but also on the other side they are not uh, glorified or put into a beautiful light or something like that. They seem very real to me. Um, do you consider yourself a political artist? Do you have an agenda or do you want just to show areas, um, for example, here of Cluj, that not everybody gets to see? Well, the political uh, um, context is indirectly. It's I do the photos not with the agenda um, to, to make a political statement. It's out of my subjective interest. And my subjective interest was from the beginning, even in the 70s, when I I uh, made photos in Berlin or later in New York or in any city or in any part of the world. I was always interested in things people or the, the media, the mainstream media tried to ignore because it wasn't really that interesting. Or in a political contest uh, where the photographic quality didn't play any role. It was just information. So I think I approached those situation with my eye, with my instinct, with feelings, and also with an artistic quality which I I didn't put I didn't do it consciously because it was the way I was seeing things um, which are not black and white. I, uh, even in miseries, there are mysterious, there are, um, there are areas which um, are maybe lighter than it looks, it looks uh, from, the, from the first impact or the, the first impression. Uh, so my photos are not really predictable. And as you said, 
I um, there are different there's so many different layers. Of course, there is em empathy, but there is uh, the mysterious quality. Um, there is an informative quality, but at the same time, there are so many shadows and layers which um, raise maybe even more questions than it gives answers. And um, but all this isn't a conscious package. It was just the way I approached my photography from the beginning. So people shouldn't think I went to Romania and I was looking specifically for the raw, the, 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 the uh, things which I wouldn't have done anywhere else because no matter where I ever went, I mean, I, I could have shown Romania very beautiful. I could have shown so many different areas which uh, I could, Transylvania, the castles or whatever, but this was never my intention and um, I, I'm sure a lot of people are doing this and uh, pleasing uh, expectations. So I'm not, in a, I never please any ex expectations. I, I just show things which other people maybe don't see, don't dig deep enough in uh, or uh, just avoid because it, it has no commercial or mainstream value. Can you tell us a bit about uh, how, uh, uh, how you brought Miron to Romania and uh, how this exhibition came to be? Why Miron and uh, what makes him stand out as a photographer, as a, a veteran street and, uh, well, a photographer of uh, social outcasts? Oh, there are a lot of questions just in one. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so uh, there, there is a very beautiful story, in my opinion. Um, I used to to be to run a gallery um, in um, Oradea, Cluj, and Ulm. Uh, the gallery's aim was uh, visual contact. Now it's closed. Um, but I had the opportunity to 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 work with the community of artists. Actually, I I wasn't uh, my my qualification is not as a curator, but I devent, I I became a curator because um, because of the gallery and because of the events that uh, had, I had to to participate in, and. Um, in this gallery in 2016, um, we had an event where I was invited um, Claudio Pfeiffer, uh, is an artist based in Berlin who uh, runs um, um, a house publishing, but is not a, a common uh, publishing house. Um, is doing artist books and zines and special limited editions and so on. And uh, I was, um, we had his contact um, from uh, our my my friend and artist also Livio Bulia. We worked together for a long time. Um, he met Claudio in Berlin, and we found very interesting the way uh, that uh, Nart. Uh, a, a publishing house, house uh, managed by an, an artist um, comes with uh, new ideas, alternative ideas about promoting artists behind the exhibition, behind the um, exhibition uh, space, conventional space, and so on. And uh, we found very interesting the way um, he works with the artist he is promoting and this is um, how we we were um, I don't know we were very focused in that exhibition also on on Miron's work and on the precious way of um, Pogo books to to put in light his uh, Miron's work uh, in that time, he presented some uh, art books, some catalogs, 
like the New York City RIT. Um, but uh, then I also saw some other uh, photos from uh, Berlin Noir after that, afterwards. And um, we were very excited about the excited about the personality of the artist that was made in um, in page actually uh, by uh, Pogo Books. Uh, this is why we came up with the idea to invite Miron because we we didn't find him as a conventional photographer photographer. Um, so uh, Claudio helped us to get in touch with the middle. So in 2018, he was invited in this uh, residence at video, video, uh, at the visual contact. And uh, with the help of uh, German Cultural Center, we had the opportunity to offer him this perspective and he, our help uh, for him to, to make this project. Um, I, I I must confess that I didn't think about Miron as a photographer. Um, I was thinking about about uh, about him as as an artist. We used to work with all, some other photographers from the first time, but uh, in this in his case, I was very curious about what is he going to do here in Romania, where where he has a lot of possibilities. We speak about um, a country who is permanently in a transition state. Um, there are a lot of angles, a lot of views that can be uh, captured. Um, and uh, from another point of view, I am also an artist, I'm a painter. And in some kind of way, I saw um, this kind of atmosphere and this kind of artistic empathy that he shows when he takes a photography, uh, a classical photography. And um, it, for me, it's some kind of a painting in black and white. <laughs> and uh, all this uh, the dramatic aspect involves a lot of... Um, I don't know, participation from the part of the viewer. So this is what I've noticed uh, about Miron, and this is why I was curious to work with him. And I'm very glad that I made it. <laughs> and uh, here is the time to show, even in those difficult times. And I, I hope to, to have the opportunity to see him again physically in Cluj, and uh, maybe to develop some other projects um even for for the artist not even from for photographer for, for photographers or for students from the photography department but for for artists in general because we don't do not speak about photography in a traditional way because behind the medium of photography there is another kind of speech it's another level of speech in his case Olympia suggestion to come back to Romania and um, to approach another angle. Well, there are some areas in Romania, like at the um, at the Donabe, the Donabe area, where very many poor Romanians live. For example, Constanza, that prostitution yeah. area. I'm sure there are some other areas in um, Romania which would be very very interesting for me but the problem would be if I would have stay in Cluj again I'm very far away from that area at the Donner we'll Bay. find a way <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, yes yeah, yeah if I yeah. could stay somewhere closer over there I, I, I'm ready for it again. <laughs> I'm always ready for new projects and new things, which, and of course, I mean, I just only covered one part of Romania and I was, since I was in Cluj, you see, except of uh, Bucharest, I never went actually Eastern. I mean, Arad is West, uh, Timisoara is West, uh, yeah. all those areas. Um, are more west or north, so I would very much be interested in those other areas too. So 
talking about a new project. If you can come up with something, let me know. And hopefully, I mean, the predict now is that that Corona um, tragedy is tracking on until next uh, summer, which is a long fucking time. But after that, maybe, who knows? I mean, there will be a completely, people will be even more poor, economic struggle will be even worse, uh, frustration, misery will add up. Uh, it will turn around, uh, spe spe specifically uh, countries which are off balance a little bit. I mean, okay, okay, Romania is pretty stable, but still it has a lot of um, areas which are really poor and um, which get poorer. The apparel in Romania is very fragile. You you saw that Cluj is very beautiful. It's um, we are Romania. It's a, it's it's an in, um, an emergence. Um, country in this part of the world, um, but we'll see. You maybe we will find some opportunities. <laughs> I, I'm saying not to. I don't want to predict anything. No, of course, of course, <laughs> of course not. No. <laughs> Whenever it's you see a chance, uh, if it, who knows, things will. Sometimes things come up, and uh, that's yes. it. Yes. Uh, the exhibition flashback. Return to Cluj uh, with artworks by Miron Sovnia is visible from November 5 till November 30 in the Art Museum here in Cluj-Napoca. The exhibition was curated by Olympia Bera and coordinated by Alexandra Sirbu. And the organizers are the Univers University for Art and Design, the Art Museum here of Cluj-Napoca, and us from the German Cultural Center. Um, Please feel free to uh, visit the exhibition also physically. Be aware that strict safety protocols have to be observed while visiting the museum, but I can assure you that uh, this does not impact the power and the intensity of the works on display. Thank you very much for taking part in this virtual vernissage and we hope to see you at the exhibition. Thank you.